Some companies declare uh, different rates. One period may be 10% rate. First five period they have declared 5% rate. Maybe 40% rate. Then after next period, they declare different rates. Concerning uh -huh. dividend payments. Serious, they declare some value with some growth. Then the first period, their growth rate can be 10%. First three period. Then after first three period, they declare 5%. So, like that can be different growth rate. So we use uh, when value value work of particular security here, then we use the two stages dividend uh, discount model. So remember, we call that dividend discount model. So this is a discounting. In other words, we call that uh, capitalizing, taking the cost of it. So likewise, uh, first period. First three year period, they can declare in one year, year three, year four, like that. The company can declare 10% growth rate of dividend. Then it's starting from year five, six, seven, eight, likewise, and dividend growth rate can be 5%. Two stages. First day, reasonably we estimate parameter. Dividend payment. But after fifth year, fourth year, we can't exactly proceed or we can't estimate the dividend payment. In that case, we call that a period is explicit. We certainly we know that for third parameter. In the period, after explicit period, so taking that uh, idea, we use the two dividend growth rate. So in that case, when we value a particular equity, if you remember, what is the method here? B1, dividend payments adding one growth rate. In this particular case, first four year period and after fourth year period. So, for the first four year period, first four year period, dividend one, dividend two, dividend three, dividend four, like that. Then we can take the percent value of first four year period dividends. Then, D1. Divided by one plus first of equity, period one. D2, one plus first of equity, period two, likewise. We can use that for the first four year period. So, in addition, starting from period four, period five, second period, we can use some particular. Constant dividend payment. So the rate is 5% rate. Dividend growth rate is 5%. Then starting from the second period, we continue entire periods. Then we can use constant dividend payout and payment model. So normally, if you remember, 
function limit pair then intersection b1 Take in this one, we estimate the value of equity based on the constant dividend valuation model. So that part we can apply here. If there are two stages here, we can apply here. Instead of D1, we can take here D S N plus one. N plus one means that. Four period, four dividend payment, and in one increment. In one increment means at the five percent rate for the second period. Dividend growth rate is D N plus one. Second period starting point, starting year dividend payment divided by W C C. Minus growth rate. Then this is minus growth. So we can apply the same equation, same formula here. But the difference is here. Initial, if we entirely use the constant dividend payment model, then we start from the D zero into one plus growth rate. Then if you start from the middle of Time. After three year period, we start uh, starting from year five. Then uh, we follow this uh, constant dividend model. Then we can estimate the value at the end of fourth year. But this formula is this one: B eight plus one, B four plus one with B five. The D four value, and then multiply by one plus five percent growth rate. D five divided by company cost of capital minus second growth rate five percent. Then we derive that value at the end of fourth year here. We call that terminal value or continuation value. It means practically. If you don't know exactly how to explain the uh, parameters here, in that case, the company could have accumulated or investors could have accumulated their value based on their dividend payment, starting from year five, year six, year seven, like dividend accumulation. That is called terminal value. Get that idea. So, practically, this is very important applications. So, practically, they follow different policies. Maybe each year they declare different dividend rates, but sometimes they uh, pay the same dividend, constant dividend. Some companies follow two policies sometimes. Two rate of dividend growth. So based on that, we can estimate the company value, particular firm value. So like here, uh, if the valuation principle is same, so we can apply the same thing in corporate valuation. So in a corporate valuation, value of the firm, so we now estimate the value, appropriate value of the company. Value of the firm, VF. So in this case, what is the corresponding the cash flow? Because the equity shareholders, 
monthly corresponding cash flow may be dividend payment. In the corresponding uh, instrument is debt instrument, then cash flow could be interest payment. If it is particular for value, then what is the corresponding cash flow? You can take net profit, free cash flow. Here. Free cash. In finance, normally we don't use the net profit. Normally we use the free cash. Net free cash flow at time. Then we can follow this valuation approach. In the company, generate the same cash flow, free cash flow for the continuous period. Then we call that. Perpetuity. So the dividend of the constant dividend payment is there, then that is a perpetuity. In that case, we, if it is a perpetuity, we divide it only cost of capital or weighted average cost of capital. In this case, the dividend payment, dividend per share divided by cost of equity. If it is perpetuity. But if it is not the perpetuity, Is there a different dividend payment? Well, concerning here, only ratings. One is what is the corresponding rate? That is the rate of dividend. This is the end. The entire company. Next, let me give you the time. But anytime company generates some play cash flow, can't capitalize by using company cost of whack. Time period maybe I want to end more infinite. In addition, if there are some you know realized after NPA, last thing, in New York, maybe, redemption value, could be, the valuation fundamentally is same, the basic principle is same. That you have to realize here what are the relevant parameters here. If it is equity valuation, parameters may be dividend per share, cost of equity, and then value per share. If it is debt instrument, interest payment, cost of debt capital, value of dividend. Now, parameters here company fee cash flow. That is derived from the net profit, then company cost of capital, and then company value. Principally, say, In NASA, if we assume value of the firm is uh, 3,000, then 0.3, equity is 0.7, how to get value of equity? We can't say exactly the value of the firm Proportions of debt capital mentioned here three percent. All right, right. Okay. All the parameters for example. We can't say exactly here because mm -hmm. now. Give some idea about this value. 
This is the actual the pre-portal value. According to the, uh, the check, uh, passages done by the accountant. Ultimately, balance sheet figures here indicate here corresponding total value. Then that consists of equity capital and debt capital. So that is, we mentioned that 3.54 percent. Then we also we can't estimate actually because we can estimate the company cost of capital. So we'll explain again here, then understand that this is the reported value, book value. But when you concern about the different company valuation, uh, we try to Estimate the value of the fair value. And when we start the session, we can discuss that. We normally observe the value of the fair value. The purpose may be to, I mean, there is an acquisition, merger. In that case, the, someone wants to know what is the fair value of this particular business. Are you willing to sell your business at the reported value? The reported value may be the, your land and bill may be before 100 years ago. But uh, that is a reported value. But that particular company, end of the period, the book will indicate the historical base value. But no one can sell that uh, assets and that reported value. Then every time, if you are a rational business, if you are a rational person, you concern about the fair value of the business. Then every time we try to squeeze the value of the fair value in physics, economic and value. Then that the process is the, this one. Value estimate process is the, this one. So you can't say exactly something value is 3000 like that. So the point value can be 3000, but the fair value is easily. Estimate. There should be a particular process, the way of estimating that value. Then now try to estimate that value. In that case, if the cost of equity is 30.54%, uh, cost of debt capital 5.1% rate, then you can, you need to uh, estimate here. You need to know some dividend payment. Dividend payments divided by one plus first of equity year, 0.135 or like. If it is a debt instrument, dividend and debt interest payment discounted by or capitalized by first of debt capital year, one plus 0.051 at time here, summation here. You want to make. Likewise, ultimately, they are, it involves some particular processes. The way of estimating that. So, initially, we have to understand a uh, particular basic parameter. That's why I explained here. When we start the session, uh, discussions, we can get the idea. So, those are the fundamental uh, frameworks. Think of particular balance sheet, income statement, what is their investment value, what is their financing, what is the ultimate target. That means the value. Reported value can be something, but practically, we must know what is the fair value, sustainable value, market value of the business. Then what is the corresponding cost here? Then that is called cost of capital. Concerning each component, cost of equity, cost of debt capital. Then we must know value particular equity shares, value of particular debt security. Then concerning that, we can estimate the value of equity, value of debt capital, then value of the company. So, 
കൺസേണിംഗ് ദ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ബിസിനസ് our session here so with that idea what we discuss now then we can go in this particular session corporate valuation now corporate means entire company entire business entire enterprise what is the total value so from the liability size value of equity value of debt value of potential right from the other side balance sheet side the right? investment side value of tangible assets value of intangible assets value of stock value of debt ends likewise in the indicate corporate valuation is otherwise known as business valuation in different times different business valuation corporate valuation firm valuation or enterprise value like that then business valuation is the process and a set of procedures used to estimate economic value of an owner's interest in a business valuation is used by financial markets to determine if they are willing to pay or receive effect a sale of business so the investors parties the investors they think what is the fair value of particular security so like why there are different players in the market if one particular company corporate uh, managers corporate leader they plan maybe to expand another similar company expand another similar company. in that case then they concern about the what is the fair value of that particular business if it is a growing business they are plan to acquire that company then now corporate valuation is done in the following situation raising capital for nasal ventures in recent future there may be different investment opportunities are there in that case you are planning to raise capital in that case then you issue particular security common shares may be the security may be there so you have to decide the what are the particular issuing price of a price then when you raise capital to the company then you have to decide the security for share the issue in price can be 20 rupee 15 rupee like you know that practically but in the issue in then raise in capital we require corporate value second point initial public offer what is initial public offer initial public offering means in the company in the public company they issue shares to the public for the first time it we call that initial public offering so if they uh, initially issue some shares to the public then they have to know what is at what rate they issue per share value then in another case acquisition one particular company intend to acquire another company if there are two companies are they are willing to merge then there is a valuation process in such a purpose we need corporate valuation diversity in some company they have actually the company so similar uh, diverse uh, similar subsidiary companies in such a case they can amalgamate all these business enterprises in that case we call that diversity 
So in that case, also, you have to evaluate the subsidiary companies. Rather. What is the main companies? Well, likewise. Then employee stock option plans. If the company is decided to give some shares to the employees, employees, then the, the particular options value, the particular share issue value should be estimated, decided. For that purpose, we can estimate the what is the fair value of the business. Then per share value can be decided. Then in, in the market, there are some different managers and investors. Some companies uh, maintain portfolios, different kind of investments. So portfolio management or manager, they think, uh, what is the company fair value? They know that uh, reported value. But practically, when they make some investment, whether they have purchased that particular share, company share, then they have to decide the what is the fair value of that particular company. So that purpose, corporate valuation is essential. So likewise, there are different reasons. Then approaches to valuation. Valuation approach is methodology used to determine the fair market value of a business. That's the reason. The simplest approach to value in a company is to rely on the information found on its balance sheet. For example, in the book value of assets, fixed assets, investment, net current assets, which by the definitions equal the value of investors' claim, equity, preferential and debt, is 500 million or maybe dollars. We say that the value of the company, also called the enterprise value, is 500 million rupees. So, according to the balance sheet model here, one side is asset side, other side is liability. So all the assets are here, fixed assets, tangible assets, and then current assets minus current assets. Then total assets. Then on the other side, we call that uh, equity claims, total shareholders claims, debt claims, like that. Because asset side equals liability. Only total assets denied. The value of the uh, debt should be subtracted as these are to be repaid off. The net result arrived at will uh, be the book value of enterprise. So, if it is a book value approach, if you know that uh, the value of assets here, total assets, and then you observe what are the long term liabilities, long term debt payments. Then we can eliminate that. Then ultimately, remaining value is the value of equity share, value of shareholders. We call that book value. But when we value that particular assets here, fixed assets, tangible assets, intangible assets, like. So there are different methods. So you mentioned. In practice, book value figures adjusted reflect replacement value. If you replace a particular asset, then what should be the value? We call that replacement value. Or second, maybe or liquidation value. If you sell that particular asset, then if you liquidate the entire business. Then all the assets should be sold to outside. Then in that case, what is the liquidation value? So otherwise, maybe net realizable value. It means if it is uh, if you concern the company's continuing, and then uh, if you want to uh, 
replace that particular asset, then you observe what is the net realizable value of that particular asset. If we have some assets here, fixed assets, or maybe land and buildings likewise, from that uh, initial value, you eliminate the, what is the uh, depreciated value. Then based on the market uh, uh, movements, the market uh, trading values, then you observe what prices we add that value, we can realize that particular asset. We call that net realizable value. Net realizable value. Reported value can be in the thousand of net realizable value, sometimes now that can be sometimes. More than or oh, ten times or maybe fifteen times. And then the uh, fair value. Then unpaid is fair value. What is it? Reasonable value. Here, yeah. how much you? Uh, so here indicate the book value in different applications we can apply in different ways. So concerning the total uh, value of assets, we concern business value. But concerning that uh, ultimate uh, figures in the balance sheet, In the balance sheet here, if you observe here, total value of assets, that is the value of the business, but concerning the real owners of the company, real owners, so we have to eliminate here debt publication. Because the debt providers are not the real owners of the company. First, we have to redeem this particular debt holder. Then, ultimately, if you deduct this value from this total value, then the remaining part is the uh, equity owners. So, normally, we concern here book value of equity shares. So, your book value means here. We concern the only equity here. Concern the total value here, book value of total assets here. So book value can be used in different ways. Book value of assets, book value of debt capital, book value of equity shares, like that. So here explain book value of equity here. And another point is fair value. What is fair value? Is a number of buyers and sellers. They may agree to buy that particular transit security at some That will be the value. Willing buyer and willing seller agree to transit that particular asset. That value is called the fair value. So if you are invested, you also, what is the, when it is uh, reasonable to pay that amount? that, Kevin. Often, even this adjustment, we find that the book value of company is much less than the market value of company. The sum of the market value of investor claims on the company. Practically, that can be reported value. Book value can be much less than the market value. Okay, here give one, one example. Book value of equity, 50,000. Equity 
fellow pay reserves, devaluation reserves, uh, term loan, mean that uh, loan term, debt capital, uh, 10,000, then 120. Starting from the asset side here, non current assets, non current asset means long term assets. Property plan and increment 50,000, licenses 10,000, altogether 60. Then current assets here, some letters and the cash, the letters, cash, both together 60. Net realizable value, if we start from here, now think of uh, the long term methods, the reported value 60. But in the market, net realizable value is 50,000. Then it's also less than the reported value. Then the sun letters, cash, both together 60,000. Normally the cash balance is same. Then the sun letters, and the debtors, then it becomes a 40 because if there are some customers, then you fully paid their dues. Dip, maybe uh, call that what is called that uh, they don't pay all the amounts due. Bad debts. I mean, ultimately, we can realize only 40,000. If you realize the real asset 50,000, and the particular uh, liters 40,000, 90,000, 10,000 cash blood, then 100,000 here. We start from here and then we observe their total liability side here, 100,000. Then term loan, long term debt capital, 10,000. Then first we eliminate this 10,000, then the remaining matter should be 90,000. Then from this 90,000, the equity shares, issued share capital here, 50,000. Then other part is reserve. So if there are some reduction in the assets here, then that reduction we can adjust to the, this particular reserve here. But reported value here, free reserve 30,000, free valuation reserve 20, all to the 50. But we can't use that. Only we have 50, this should be four. Fifty, forty, ninety, ninety, ten, hundred thousand. Another twenty-five thousand here. So however, this particular ten thousand reductions we have to adjust to this particular reserve. So here indicate the revaluation reserve. If you revalue this particular asset here, then ultimately there can. Value reduction, then that should be adjusted to this particular reserve. Around that uh, ultimate and the adjustment should be through this particular uh, reserve from Britain or maybe some other valuation reserve like. Of course, here indicate the net realizable value. Even though it is a reported value under the net realizable value is from the top. This is a very simple example. So, in the other case, you can think of uh, this particular tangible assets. You can replace. You can sell it at uh, 
by another one. Then what is the replacement? Otherwise, you can think of this particular asset flow totally sold in the market, then what is the cash we can realize? <coughs> so, you have to read the particular explanation here. The discrepancy arises because the conventional balance sheet does not reflect valuable intangible assets for the firm such as brand equity, technical and managerial know-how and relation with the vendors and so on. Then you have to think of the company generated some of the intangible uh, images someday, maybe brand, uh, brand loyalty, brand goodwill. The, the, we may have some develop some relation with the customer, supplier. If you then sell that particular business to other people, you have to think of that particular relationship also. So you have free resource means so that uh, Any resource means that the company has some particular issued share capital here. Issued share capital here. From year to year, sometimes we uh, accumulate some reserves. So, this particular, sometimes this particular uh, the reserves, we can Declare to the uh, declare uh, distribute among the shareholders. Some reserves we can't declare. Normally, revaluation reserves we can't declare. We have to get the uh, approval from the uh, AGM or maybe some their corporate decision uh, uh, making process. So, three reserves anytime they can declare. They can decide to declare as dividend payment. They can decide to some give some bonus shares like that. So that's the meaning of free reserve. So the co corporation they can uh, use that resource, uh, getting much getting approval from the particular corporate money to use. But some reserves we can declare as dividend or bonus shares like that. Then you have to get the approval. That's why you're different. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, in book values, the total is 120 or 110,000, sir. Uh, share 50, 50, and 10. Uh, that is also some different. No? Yeah. That should be actually 120 because here the total is 120. Here, yeah, uh, 50, 110, we can say that uh, fifty uh, then 70, 70 minus 10, 60. Here should be 60. Yes. Yeah. That should be corrected here. 50. Here we can write here 30,000. Some uh, numerical errors we can uh, correct that as uh, here. Three is of 30, evaluation is we had 30,000, then both together 60,000. But we can realize only 40,000. That's a 20,000 reduction in valuation. Obviously, the divergence between the book value and the market value is more intangible, intense to 
sectors such as information technology and pharmaceutical and less intangible in terms of sectors such as real estate and banks. So in different business sectors, we have different uh, values. Here indicates uh, intangible intensive sectors. It means um, if you observe uh, some manufacturing company in there, then it is a tangible. More they have more tangible assets, fixed assets, machineries, equipment like factories. But in some other software industry, uh, service sector in company, they don't have much uh, physical assets. They have more intangible intensive. If you say that uh, Google company, they have intangible value. They don't have much uh, tangible asset, but worldwide they have some intangible value. They have network, they have some connection, they develop some databases like that. It means they have intangible, intensive nature. So that intangible value of uh, the value of intangible uh, assets that may be more important. You have to think of that in value in a particular business. Important value can be very small value, but based on that intangible nature of that particular sector, that value may be more value than the other sector. When they sell their businesses, they are concerned about it. They are not selling uh, without considering their relationship uh, between the customers and the company. They have good reputation, they are concerned that for that reputation, they make the location of value. In the case of that, you are not uh, willing to give your business to other people if you have developed some images in the past. Do some value for that relationship also. The second approach here indicates first indicate the book value. Then second one, income based approach. So far we list on the balance sheet base. Here the balance sheet, total investment here, assets, and then concern the total liability here. We eliminate the debt capital then. What is the remaining value here. Then concern the income based approach. Normally we value the company based on the income statement related item. Read that this approach looks to overcome drawbacks of using the asset back valuation app by referring to earning potential and using it. Multiply. Or we can say here, capitalization rate. So here, a lot of uh, issues can be argued, can be arise. Uh, the real assets is uh, this much of value, but you have mentioned that intangible value is so much that. So that is not feasible like that. That can be different arguments. Reported the uh, value of good value may be 100,000. After deducting the depreciation, but uh, concerning the, the current market value, we can give some different valuation. So sometimes they, they can add that the valuation also not much appreciated because the, the depending on the nature of that particular assets, earning generating power. Maybe all the machines may be there. Value can be more, but the earning generator may be less. There are different arguments regarding the balance sheet type. Due, due to that reason, second approach indicates the income statement based values based on the income 
¿Entiendes? Es tiempo. Tiene una importancia. Todavía hay un term capitalization de un bebé. Pero es mal player. Mal player means that term. Say for example, different mal players are there. Think of uh, you know, purchase and particular company shares at the uh, forty rupees. This is the business because you have purchased particular company shares at forty rupees. In each year, if you can uh, expect from the company, you for example. Uh, Eight to people dividend per share dividend payment annually, maybe eight rupees, or maybe earnings per share, maybe eight rupees per share earnings, eight rupees. So, what in this particular the concerning earning per share and the company price or the investment value? What is the relationship? Then we can say. If you have invested in this particular company, you are earning multiply maybe five times, three times. We can say earning multiply is five times. Every year you get the A to B pressure. After five years, you get the A to B pressure. Five times. So in that case. What is the corresponding capitalization rate? Every time, if we you get the annual earning, earning uh, A to B per share, in that particular five times calculation, each year you get the how much? Twenty percent rate. Then capitalization rate is. Twenty percent, or in two. So each year, you get the twenty percent return on your investment. Then here. If you multiply divide by point two, what will be the value here? Ultimate value is forty rupees here. And here we concern about the earning potential. Using the multiplier. Multiplier means if your investment, is, for example, if your investment is forty rupees per share, you have purchased company share. Forty rupees. In the year you get the then after five year period, so investment you get you can require your investment five year period. Every year you get the eight rupees, eight rupees, eight rupees like. In the future, you recover your investment. Then here we call that earning multiplier. Earning multiplier five times. If the earning multiplier is five times, then annually your return is how much? Eight to be compared to four. Earning. Percentage twenty percent. Then every year, if you get the, if you know that uh, this particular value, you know only earning per share. You know that uh, the particular uh, compensation rate. So this is this rate is called capitalization rate. Capitalization rate. Multiplier, all particular. Very simple. Earnings 
can best be depicted by EBI. So, company earnings can be mentioned in different forms. If it is an earning before enter tax, depreciation and amortization. It means that operating profit. And capitalization rate will be computed either using the capital model discussed later in this. So, here, In the uh, EBI it is given, uh, some parameters may be given, sometimes the, say for example, company capitalization rate, how we estimate the capitalization rate. So in this example, it is very simple. If it concerns the company profit here, when profit is given, then in order to estimate that this particular uh, EBIT, this is a similar to uh, operating profit book, then we can capitalize this value by company weighted uh, average cost of capital. So, this is a capital paper. In this case, if you don't know this particular WACC, then there should be some particular way of estimating that. You indicate the concern in the cap model, capital asset pricing model. And so some companies, say for example, declare individual. Some companies don't declare individual. In that case, if your data per share is not known, certainly, then how to estimate the, the particular cost of equity company? Need and payment, market price per share, into 100 debt, we can estimate the cost of equity. In this dividend payment, is not estimated. If the company not given the dividend payment, then we can estimate the exact unit cost of equity. Likewise, uh, if the company dividend payments, not clear about that, uh, the resource regarding that dividend payment, uh, in such a case, we can use the capital asset pricing model. Uh, so the capital asset pricing model, use that model. One is risk free rate of return plus beta value multiplied by risk premium. Risk premium means return on market portfolio. Risk premium rate. Concerning the particular company, instead of this greater than the cost of capital, uh, if you know that, don't know that greater than the cost of capital, in that case, we can estimate the company cost of capital based on the Capital asset price and more. Then there should be price per day, especially bill rate. Beta factor. What is beta factor? Beta factor is what is the corresponding company's stock prices, what is the company overall market, company average prices. Then we can explain the beta value. Compared to market, Say, for example, uh, market prices are changes at market price increased by 10 percent rate. In this particular company, prices are increased by 10 percent. 10 grade. Market is going up. Particular company is also going at the same direction. Then what is meter value here? Meter value is Because market is 10% increase, company also increased by 10%. If the market uh, prices increase by 10%, when this particular company's share prices are increased by 8% rate in the beta value. Beta value is here 0.5. 
Favor example. The market average. You know that OSHA price in the Milan S and P 20 Milan index. Like that, that is the uh, index representing all the or oh, maybe taking the average. Now, market prices increase by 10 percent rate, but this particular company's uh, shares are increased by 15 percent. So what is the sensitivity level here? Beta value is. 1.5. Market average increased by 10%. This particular company's prices are increased by 15%. Then that is 1.5. So in this case, this particular company's beta side may be in between. Maybe one, maybe less than that, or maybe more than that. If the beta effect is less than that, then sensitivity level is less than one, less than market average. If the sensitivity level is more than one, it means changes is sensitivity level is more than market average. You can think of different topics. Here, yeah. simply we can discuss the, the things, but if there are some particular and tax. Corresponding access, we have to make the adjustment. Say, for example, here, if there are some uh, market values here, think of it. Think of it. Here. So, we plan an equipment. If this value is booked at 50,000, if we realize this value, if we sell this asset in the market, the, from this realized value, sometimes we have to pay taxes. If already we have de depreciated from this 60,000, if we have already depreciated all these uh, uh, values, then from the market sale, we have to pay taxes in other cases. If there are some particular taxes on selling this particular real assets, then in the certain tax rate concerning that ultimately this value can be taxed. Yeah, after tax, be realizable value. Some is also like this. After making all the possible uh, uncertainties, mandates, if there are some taxes, legal cases, they will be taxes. Then we consume them. So, however, here, we have given the one example. A limited made a prog uh, gross profit of 1 million, direct expenses of 400,000. You are required to determine the earning value of the company as well as uh, well per share, assuming number of shares 100,000. So we indicate company EBIT level is or gross profit is 1 million. Yes, yeah, 1 million. Less direct expenses here, 400,000 operating cost. Then, ultimately, EBITD company gross profit. Gross profit minus direct expenses, then we can estimate 
operating profit here. Then if your operating profit is 600,000, then you can think of company capitalizing rate. What is capitalizing rate? This rate is 4.5 percent. I can capital model here. Estimate is 4.5%. Plus beta value, company beta is 0 0.9. 0 0.9 multiplied by market rate of beta, 12%. Minus 4.5. Then capitalization rate is here 11.25%. Then this value can be capitalized taking 11.25%. Then 600,000 divided by 11.25%. Then value becomes here 5,300. And then number of shares 100. Divide by 100,000, the first share value becomes 53.3. So here, KD into 1 minus T was given as 10%. Can you take So, where is that 10% rate? Where is that 10%? Not for the case, you will have a direct expense of 200,000. Then, what's the next capital? No, it's a little bit worse. You need to assume that. We can do that. Uh, in this case, uh, in that case, you have to have some information regarding the, 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 the particular you know, capitalized pricing model. In order you can estimate the company cost of them. It has to be. And you have to have in the problem, let us hear. And equity proportions, cost of equity capital, cost of debt capital, then we can estimate with direct. In that case, if you uh, if that information given, then we can estimate where the direct cost of debt. So otherwise, we have to use the given uh, information according to capital asset price and more than the company cost of debt. In that case, it is estimated based on this particular capital one. Never point over. Otherwise, we can use this kind of method 
in the information is given. Capital structure, the corresponding cost is given, then we, say, we could have estimate of the average cost of capital. However, now realize the approach is income based. You can start from the company profit, earning profit, earning. Then company earnings capitalized by taking the company cost of greater average cost. Of. Then you know when you estimate cost, greater average cost, but there are different methods. <coughs> So in this case, we have estimated the weight and average cost of capital based on the capital asset price in Enterprise value obtained above will be divided by the number of shares to arrive at the value of the available outstanding shares here on the you will buy that then fifty two point three. Take in the same example we took in the income based approach, we work out the equity value as well. Oh. We can follow what we have discussed earlier. So, we indicate different steps. Step one, calculate capital value at multiple of, say, five for the industry as well. So, based on the multiple here, the multiples can be estimated. So, you indicate the five times, EBA, TDA multiple. Then each year, we generate company profit 600,000. If the multiple is five times, then 600,000 divided by five. It means that if the particular company annual earnings is so, and if you invest invested in this business and within five year period you can recover your total industry. Then you can say your multiple is multiple of five times. And is per year six hundred thousand. <laughs> We can because this by a feature, then the value becomes here 3000. From A to level, the cost of capital we get. Entire firm value. I am just confused in how to get the value of debt. I am okay with the value of firm and equity. Now, normally, uh, the company value of debt is reported value. In, the, in most cases, Uh, then obligation, long term obligation for their or debt capital, then our liabilities, if we have taken a bank loan, then ultimately we have to pay that only the how much we have borrowed from the bank. In some other cases, <laughs> if the debt instruments are traded, 
in the mark. Right, debentures, bonus, those are traded in the mark. In that case, we can concern about the market. Right. However, concerning the company has taken particular debt security. If the company is not redeemed, debt is too much. And good value. Otherwise, we have to take some business from the company in the decision making process. For example, if the dip value is, say, for example, in this case, the company had some uh, value, uh, 2000 dip value obligation. Then we can deduct from this 5333.33 minus 2000. And then 3333.33, then divide by number of shares. In other cases, if this debt instrument is uh, maybe the company can ready met reported value, or maybe a ready mix higher price, or maybe lower price. Then you have to take approval from the company. If it is a traded in the market, uh, tradable securities are there. Debt securities are there, then market color can be different from this people. In that case, the company can decide to <coughs> declare that redeem that security at some time uh, with some premium. If the company decides to at 10% and redeem, then that is called with premium. If the market condition is lower, Market is not giving the appropriate value for this particular debt security. In that case, uh, that can be deducted some particular rate. We call that at some discount rate. The book value may be 2000, then redeemable value can be more than that, 2200 with market premium. In other cases, the, the book value can be redeem at lower than that because the market trading value may be less than that. Then at discounted price it can be 1800. So that can be happened. Now here given EBA TDA 600, EBA TDA multiple five times, the invested value can be recovered within five year period, then that is the multiple. Then the value can be capital value can be three times. Step two, suppose of if there if there is a debt of three hundred thousand and surplus comes to the uh, tune of five hundred. To compute the equity value, reduce the debt and add the surplus funds, cash and cash equal to represent shareholders full or dividends. Distribution. So you indicate if the total value is here 3000 rupee, then out of this 3000, we have to eliminate some debt obligations. If there were 300,000 and debt obligations, we have to eliminate that. In addition, we have a, some, uh, some particular reserves, 500,000. So, then that is. We have to add that. Then it becomes 3,200. <coughs> Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, are there two methods? Uh, the first one to use the capitalization rate and to arrive at the earnings value. If so, earnings value is that the business value? Uh, yes, that is the business value ultimately. Earnings value when we use the capitalization rate. So yes. again, we are using uh, the multiples. Multiple. Uh, another method to uh, business value. Yes. 
So business value can be capitalized value, either capitalized value or equity value. If we have surpluses on debts, we have to calculate the equity value using the capitalized value. Is that the way, sir? Yes, yes, yes. That is correct. If uh, debt and surplus is not given any information, we yes. should stop at capitalized value and that will be the business value. Yes, yes, yes. If surplus is not given, don't worry about it. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. When we take some there, discuss on that approach. Say, for example, in the balance sheet, we know that the reported equity value reserves are there. Then ultimately, we can estimate the equity value. Then, debt begins at the loan term, debt capital, then total value. So, for instance, in the market value here, equity can be, equity shares can be taken in the market. They can sell it at the market value. At the same time, debt is the one also traded at the market. In that case, we can value the business number of shares. In the balance sheet here, equity and debt. So, representing this value, there are corresponding numbers, you know, number of shares, a number of debentures. So, if the markets, uh, those two instruments are traded in the market, in that case, you can estimate the value of equity here. Number of shares here, outstanding, multiplied by. Market price. Yeah, debt is more of the same. Number of debt is the multiplied by market price of debt is the same. price of debt. In that way, we can explain that. In the case of when the security is over, public data in value can be obtained by merely adding the market value of all. Outstanding security. This simple approach is called stock and debt approach by property tax appraisal. It is also referred to as a market tax approach. So, this is the one another bit. One is book value, other one is equity based approach, earning based approach. Then, a third method is the stock and debt approach, market value of debt. Bed. Market value of equity capital pay by their corresponding outstanding number. Then, other method, fourth one, discount of cash flow approach. Discount of cash flow. You know that in Pioneer, every time you observe uh, discounted value. Some cash flows discounted at some particular way. If you get this idea, can you compare it? As we explained earlier, company. Uh, <coughs> We know that the free cash flow, capitalizing the cash flow of the company, we can derive the wealth. Free cash flow, if it is a perpetual, perpetuity, every time we the company generates the same free cash flow, then this should be discussed by taking cost of capital. For that, we can say the cost of capital. If there are two methods, that two stages, we could have uh, estimated the value based on that two methods, the two stage method, like a dividend discount model. One period, explicit period, and another period after explicit period. Two stages, like. Value in the firm using the discounted cash flow approach is conceptually similar to value in the capital project using the percent value method. 
the discussion. So cash flow approach involves forecasting future cash flows for all time to come and discounting the same to the present value of using the cost strategy that reflects internal years. First, the first capital structure and business. Now, try to get the idea here. Educate. Company generates some free cash flows in future time period. For the first period, we can certainly estimate the free cash flow. One, two, three, like that. Then we start it from another period. Then we can forecast for that value also. And then then the Value. So, based on the past period data, then we can forecast for the future period. If you based on the past five year period data, we can focus for the next period cash flows in then period one, period two, period three, it means the next period after next period like this. If you can estimate that pay cash flow or forecasted pay cash flow in next periods, then we can get the present value of that. Present value of uh, second year uh, forecast. Present value of third year forecast. So we know this discount that we have taken from the Then the idea is. There are several models of discounted cash flow value. So, like that, there are different methods. One is enterprise discounted cash flow model. So, here you can enterprise discounted cash flow. So, here the free cash flow, year one, year two, year three, that's fine. Then we can get the present value. Then that is the enterprise discounted cash flow. In other words, equity discounted cash flow model concerning only the equity shareholders, real owners of the company. If you can do this, I'm based on the money, the value, equity value year one, equity value year two. Then, based on the cost of equity capital, we can derive the present value of that. And second method, other one is adjusted present value method. You know that. All the methods are not, uh, you don't need to uh, get the idea, but you don't need to know the way of estimating that value. That is a little bit complicated, but we don't expect that things in this financial management subject. But if you are a corporate manager, uh, corporate valuation subject, or business valuation subject, we do that part. But then the idea here, in first case, we concern entire value, company value. Second case, we concern only the company owner's value, real owners. Third method, adjust the person value model. It means in a company, in this case, they may have the capital, equity capital. Two kind of capital. Concern in that, and the third method is the adjusted present value. So, in this case, if there are two kind of investors in the company, in that case, the weighted average cost of same example, that is WCC 10% rate. If there are different investors, there are debt providers and the equity shareholders, in that case, Taking the weighted average cost of capital, that is not feasible. Argument is that adjusted percent value should be used, taking that adjusted for that, that and the equity ratio, leverage ratio. Then we have to follow the 
adjusted pressure nerve method then the reason is that merely taking the total value here based on the beta net cost of capital that is not feasible because the company has some debt capital and equity capital. in such a case some company may have only equity capital some other company may have debt and equity proportionate so different company may have different proportion so in all the cases without considering that segregation debt and equity if you value a company taking a weighted average cost of capital uh, then the value the estimation process is not much appropriate then we have to consider that particular just my person value meaning in that consider debt and equity consider uh, leverage condition so get the idea here and another that is economic profit model so what is economic profit so regardless the any particular debt and equity say for example company generated some profit if you in the company generated some profit hmm. that generation can be from equity shareholders as well as from the debt provider company generated profit because of these two investors then ultimately uh, concern in the economy profit from this total profit we have to eliminate what is the possibility opportunity cost you can have invest your money in the bank and get some return without investing in the business so here we have to eliminate opportunity cost no cost of capital then ultimately the result is economic profit from the profit we have to eliminate cost opportunity cost of then remaining value the economic that economic profit can be capitalized so discount or taken so here similar way we have to estimate the year one year two year three what is the economic economic profit. then we have to take this one take in the consider the cost of capital and then estimate the present value of that particular business that method is called economic profit just get the idea different methods are there enterprise discount or cash flow method enterprise mean taking all the entire business regardless the debt and equity the second one equity discounted cash flow model based on the real owners of the company you can estimate the company value then eliminate the debt capital then it is the equity value third method is uh, adjusting the particular concerning on the different investors debt and equity shareholders then concerning that we can make the adjustment to the beta average cost of we call that adjusted well then last one economic profit from the earned profit we can eliminate the uh, opportunity cost cost of capital then that is the opportunity economic profit so the valuation process is same a is as is Uh, yes, the estimation, estimation process is same. We can forecast on the next periods, next years. 
that may be enterprise value, that may be equity value, that may be adjusted value, or maybe economic profit. So now here indicates there are essentially five steps in perfect discounted cash flow based valuation. In this uh, method, there are several steps. Here, first one, arriving at the free cash flow. First, we have to estimate the value of the company, free cash flow. From the profit, we can estimate the free cash flow. We can eliminate the non cash flow item, depreciation. And then, if there are some investment in the business, then we can eliminate that. Then, we do the free cash flow. Second step, Year period. So the next second year period, like this. Then we have to develop some particular forecasting based on the past experience. Third step, determining the discount rate based on the past. Then it capitalizes the rate, we have to decide. In some case, we have to take the cost of capital. In other case, cost of equity capital. In other case, adjust that way. Like, then, uh, finding out the terminal value of the enterprise. What is the terminal value? As we uh, uh, explained earlier, at some particular time period, if, it is, if the business continue for the, the remaining period, you can observe with some explicit forecast period, you can estimate the values, free cash flows, economic profit. But after that explicit forecast period, you can uh, the, derive the value based on that constant. Dividend discount model. If you look at that, we can derive value at that particular time. That value is for terminal value. So, why? What is the reason for that? In the company, continue for unknown time period, you can forecast for the certain number of periods. Then you can forecast for the, that particular certain certain period. But after that period, you can certainly you estimate. The environment can be changed, the business can be changed likewise. Then concerning that, after that period, you have to estimate that what, is, what should be the accumulated value after uh, explicit forecast period. is called continuation value or maybe we can say terminal value. In finding the terminal value, the other one is finding out the present value of both free cash flows and the terminal value and interpretation of the result as with that particular two stage model. We can estimate uh, for present value of first explicit process period and plus present value of terminal value. Continuation. So, you are given the example. So we get step one computation of free cash flow 2016 17 earning after tax 600,000 is one time income uh, at one time expense. We know, uh, do some estimations similar to this. Say, for example, 
in different time period may have different income might of expenses side that the excite can be sometimes continuously happening for example rent pays depreciation operating uh, salaries those are normally every uh, year we can know but in addition some there can be some events there may be some particular or uh, cases the particular court cases may be going on in that case the we have to pay some tax compensations fine those items are occasionally not in the so from this earning of we have to eliminate the kind of one time operating item that's why here in the eliminate here one time in we have some particular income so one period then we are eliminate but during the 2016 17 year we had that value 200000 we can eliminate that one time expenses and then that may be compensations uh, due to cost a uh, court case we had to pay up fine some that time we we end back at one and then non non cash flow we can add non cash flow expenses here then free cash flow here six hundred So here, again, I will explain. Here in 2016 and 17 year year, uh, in addition to income, uh, continuous income in terms of item, there were two items here. One item says, uh, one income item was there. Uh, it indicated 200,000. Something maybe if the company makes some income in this particular period only. If the company uh, took some uh, huge uh, compensation from the support case, fine. Some no. Likewise, only one one time uh, income can can, can be happen. So similar with that here, the answer two hundred thousand were, and we have to eliminate that from the profit. We have to eliminate that. Then it becomes a normal condition. If there were some expenses, unnecessarily uh, one item can be happen like the abnormal value. Then that expense or item is handled. Then we can end it. Because we have we have this six hundred thousand half in that in this, and we have to add back. Then in addition here, this profit derived after we have been some depreciation in cash flow. So in order to explain the free cash flow, then we can add back this hundred thousand depreciation. Then we have we can derive the free cash flow here six hundred. So in addition here, during 2016 and 17, if there were some investment programs can be taken place, like here, we can say that 2017, 2016, this is 2017. The Investment in the several example plant and machineries, property plant and equipment. So the sixteen year were hundred million, two thousand seventeen, and then hundred million hundred twenty million. So during the period, during the period there is an investment in 
प्लांट कंपनी प्लांट है नहीं इसकी ट्रेंड में तो हम भी जनरल डिस्पेल वे और जनरल डिस्पेल हो समटाइम्स में भी फ्रॉम द कंपनी प्रॉफिट तो इन दिया रहा सम सच इन्वेस्टमेंट आइटम्स हियर वी कैन एलिमिनेट फ्रॉम दिस वेल ओन there are 20 million rupee investment here we can deduct here 20 million uh, net investment that's that i uh, information not given here Then pay cash, we can estimate here. Then another one assumption to arrive at adjusted pay cash flow as below. Then projected years: 2017 year, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20. Our current period is 2016, 17. Then if you can forecast for the next. Three year period, then we can consider that the cash flow five percent increment year to year. The free cash flow increment can be at some particular rate. So here indicate some at five percent increment six hundred nine to one point zero five six hundred third multiplied by one point zero five. Six hundred sixty-two. Then, this changes in working capital. As we had explained earlier, in the balance sheet, one particular time period. So here, if you consider two thousand eighteen. Nineteen twenty. During these periods, to consider the working capital. Say, for example, current assets minus current liabilities, working capital. Two thousand eighteen. If there were here some particular value, and then two thousand. Nineteen, you can observe the difference. Then nineteen to twenty, there were some differences. So taking the differences here indicate the changes in working capital because that is the investment during the period net investment from the free cash flow. We have to eliminate that working capital investment from this net profit. We have to eliminate the investment net excesses. Yeah, indicate that six hundred thousand, fifty thousand, fifty million, or fifty thousand, fifty thousand, twenty thousand. So after deducting the, this investment here, what investment? Adjusted free cash flow five hundred, five hundred fifty thousand, six hundred fifty-two thousand. Then, if you can estimate the reasonably these values for the next three-year period, then take in that uh, the weighted average cost of capital here. Assume eight percent rate, eight percent rate, eight percent rate. Then you can estimate this cash flow. The present value is four hundred sixty-three. Five hundred fifty. That is. One of seventy-two from the this value, six hundred fifty-two convert in percent value term, then it becomes the five hundred seventeen thousand rupees. It means this five hundred thousand discount by taking one point zero eight is five hundred fifty. Divided by one point zero eight two times 
terminal value perpetual growth that will be achieved after three years onward is assumed at three percent rate so so after three years first this is the current period year one year two year three so after three year period the growth rate is assumed three percent rate In the first period, the growth rate was uh, here. We assume some particular rate we have mentioned. The rate was four uh, five percent. Five percent rate. After so. Four, five, six, more like here. Growth rate is three percent. The terminal value here, similar with that growth model, constant growth model. Cash flow year three, this value uh, divided by uh, multiplied by one plus zero three. This is second period growth rate. Five hundred seventeen here. That is terminal value. Five hundred seventeen multiplied by one point zero three. Any one growth rate divided by uh, weighted average cost of capital. That should be here. First growth elevation month, we can derive this value. Then that that should be five hundred seventy multiplied by one point zero three divided by we can derive cost of capital. This should be actually zero. Minus growth rate point zero. Then the value becomes here. Ten thousand six hundred fifty-three. Percent value of free cash flow. Third year, it means uh, starting from year four for the entire remaining period. That value is ten thousand six hundred fifty-three. In addition, we have to add present value of this four hundred sixty-three, present value of four hundred seventy-two, present value of five hundred seventy. Step E indicates total discounted cash flow of enterprise twelve thousand one hundred six thousand. Within the present value of cash flows arrive in above table these well, values plus the terminal value. This is the terminal ten thousand seven hundred fifty three. In other words, value of the enterprise for a potential acquisition is twelve thousand one hundred six thousand rupees. So this is similar with that uh, two-stage dividend discount model. So remember that uh, in business valuation, we uh, estimate the company value uh, based on this method. So this is the one uh, more appropriate or popular method in uh, West countries. So we have to. Follow that kind of method here, but get the idea here. Then I'm going to 
do this in detail, but you have to have some idea. Yes, sir. So, no, yes. Uh, sir, in calculation, uh, in ca in the calculation of terminal value, yes. cash flow at year three, uh, are we taking the present value or the adjusted free cash flow, sir, six hundred fifty-two or five hundred seventeen? So this this value is the free cash flow, year one. This is the yeah. second year cash. Flow. Third year, five hundred seventeen. This so is the that whole period. So we have to take the present value of 463, present value of 472, present value of 570. So in addition, we have to add terminal value. The yes, sir. Terminal value means at the end of third year, if you could have uh, realized some value here, that take a place at the end of third year. Hmm? Yes, sir. So... Uh, 517 means 652 adjusted uh, for the time value. Uh, that value only we take here. 517. Mm. Cash flow at year 3, 517 means already adjusted for the time value. You know? yeah. So uh, are we taking that or 652 which is not 600. adjusted? 652. Normally, uh, you know, we can see the adjustment. Adjustment, however, pay cash. Year one, year two, pay cash. Then, uh, when you estimate the discounted cash, we convert it to present value. So, when you calculate the Continuation value, then free cash flow at time period three, uh, then uh, I, the thing is that uh, the, this is the adjusted one. The adjusted one, then uh, concerning the cost of capital 10 plus 8% rate, this is the particular value at the end of year three. Uh, <coughs> So, the concern is the second part of the month. Then, at this particular point, we know we consider that uh, continuation value or terminal value that should be free cash flow that could have been realized after third year period, but at the end of third year. This should be actually the the free cash flow, free cash flow, uh, free cash flow uh, mean that 652. Then that value should be, uh, yeah, actually, we can take uh, like here, uh, 652. 1.03 divided by this is the fourth year value. So, if a constant valuation that we are taking here, first of all, is 0 0.08 minus 0 0.03. Then, that value should be divided by 1 over cost of capital. This should be multiplied by 1 over 0 0.08 1, 1 0.08 at time period 3. Then we get that value. And, uh, then that is the present value of terminal value. Otherwise, we concern the continuation value concerning this 652 into 1 plus 03 
divided by 0 0.08 minus 0 0.03. So that is the continuation value. So here taken uh, all the values here. Uh, so check whether you can get the value here. Uh, first you can estimate the value like here and then discount taking 1 over 1.08 to power 3. Because we realize that value at the end of year 3. In order to convert into present value term, we have to convert this year 3 cash flow or terminal value dividing 1.08 to power 3. Then the value becomes here. Then check that value whether it is similar with this particular equation. 517 into 1.03 divided by 1.08 minus 0.03. Then we get the answer, correct answer here. Both they may be correct. You can check that. 517 into 1.03, uh, 532.51 divided by 1.08.03. It means 1.05 divided by 1.05, 507, 507, 0.15. Okay, the other way, 652, 1.03, divided by 0 0.05. Six fifty two one point zero three divided by zero. That should be limited. Meet. 10,652. Yes, that is correct. That task is correct. And understand this. Yes. We can substitute this equation, terminal value, 517 here. If you take the present value of cash flow 517, multiply by 1.03 divided by 1.08 minus 0 0.03, then you get the 10,600. Yeah, I got the 62, but here, however, the answer is still. Oh, otherwise, you can take the correct way is this one. Adjusted T cash flow here, multiplied by 1.03, divided by 0 0.08. Minus 0 0.03. Then that answer should be divided by 1.08 to power 3. Because we got that uh, this value at the end of year 3. Then we have to discount that for 3 year period. Taking the 1.08 to power 3. 3 times. We divide by 3 times. Then we get the Present value of terminal value 10,653.94. Taking this present value of 
प्रस्तुत प्रिय पीरियड अल्टीमेटली नेहरू बिकम्स हियर ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड वन नाइन सिक्स Yes, this is the terminal. Then we have to discount. Oh, otherwise we can directly uh, use this equation. Find this present value. Find seventeen one by one point zero three divided by one point zero eight minus zero point zero three. Both we get the same answer. However, ultimately, from this uh, method, discounted cash flow method, we get the we forecast for the next period's uh, value, and then estimate the cost of capital, and then we get the we estimate the present value of uh, first period's uh, cash flows, and then uh, present value of the terminal value of the second period's uh, the. Cash flow accumulate the cash flow discounting take in the first of <coughs> then both together we estimate the company value. So that is the way of uh, estimating the corporate value. This part is little bit uh, difficult if you have done valuation sub subject. Uh, that part is uh, not. Difficult thing is we have to realize the way of estimating that But for the your final examination purpose. We are not going to test this kind of uh, complicated issues. But the information given appropriately, we can apply just only the the particular concept. We can test. This. So similar with that early case, the the multiple, the multiple can be different kinds. Early we understood that EBIT multiple. Early we understood price earning multiple. If you are an investor, price earning multiple means what? Price earning multiple. For example. If you are invested in company shares, the value can be twenty rupees per share. Every year, if you get that uh, earning four rupees, it means price earning multiple is five times. Price earning multiple is five times within the five year period. You can recover your investment, just like. Uh, Payback period. So on the other side, other side we can can say capital return rate is by uh, term means twenty percent per year. Then four rupee divided by point two, we get the value twenty rupee. So this is the way of estimating the company value, the earnings value, the equity value. The company value also we can take the taking that key cash flow and some other methods like so. However, multiples can be different from key cash flow multiples, EBIT multiples, EBIT multiples, price earning multiples. So it gives some meaning within that particular presentation. That if it is key cash flow, that is company level. In EBIT, that is company operating profits. If it is a price earning multiple, it reflects some equity shareholders' point of view. If you are investing common shares, then that expresses regarding that equity share index. Likewise, so like here, there are different. Uh, Multiple 
methods used in welding. So here you can the free cash flow to equity, free cash flow to uh, firm. So that rearranging that particular dim value, eliminating dim value, we can derive the equity value. Without eliminating dip capital, we can take the company value. Free cash flow to equity, free cash flow to firm. However, many problems, not much complicated, yet complicated, but get the idea. In your case, a little bit than that. So, you indicate the economic profit, right? But give the idea of reading that. Then, concerning relative valuation, that particular multiples are in relative valuation. You indicate relative valuation. Concerning different companies, company X, Y, we said likewise. Comparing different companies, comparing the industry average, industry. Then we use the multiples. The multiples can be different. So here indicate n price multiples, equity multiples. There are two prices you indicate. If it has to be the company value, we call that enterprise value. So different multiples are indicated here. Enterprise value to EBA, enterprise value to good value, enterprise value to sales ratio, like that. Then the equity multiples also can be different from price earning multiple. So that is the actual concern in the two, one in the Firm value, other one is equity value. Equity value means eliminating the debt capital here. So, concerning that, there are different multiples here. Different multiples here. Here also different. Both are the equity multiples. Concern the equity value. Price and multiple. Price sales multiples will indicate price sales multiples. And then there are some features. So don't worry about that uh, features here. The answers are also given. If you can, you can do that. And then uh, basically you have to understand the, the fundamental requirement, fundamental application of valuation. Don't worry about that uh, adjusted percent value, some discount cash flow, complicated cases likewise. But then the idea. So this is also a very important topic in uh, financial management. Concerning your own enterprises, uh, you can think of <coughs> application of uh, those kind of uh, aspects, concepts. Not only the reported value, but the market value, the comparative value, and then we can concern with some other hidden values. Brand value is hidden. If we have some made some good relation with the customers, that is a hidden value. Then you concern about here, hidden value of. You give some value for that particular hidden value. That is a way of uh, rational investors to some particular final conclusion. We 
think any stop now. If you have any questions, uh, Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, do we have to be thorough with answering those questions given, sir? Or uh, these calculations at the end of the this uh, particular handout? Yes, the, the, the basic fundamental things important, but not complicated one. The, that five-step process and that uh, we don't need to do that, actually. We, you don't need to thorough with that area. That, that, but get the idea. Only that we can say that uh, the discount cash flow calculation of the uh, values, the discount cash flow methods may be there, but you don't need to uh, emphasize different methods and their calculation like. But you have to have some simple, basic uh, calculation. Initial this is book rules, learning base rules, and then some. You don't need to go into details here for this. And to get the idea. If you don't have any other questions, so we can stop now. So in the meantime, I will allocate the assignment. First of all, you have to give your group details to the MBA office. I will collect from them and then I will assign. So after the exam, the final exam, not the financial management, last date of your MBA exam. From that, we can give you some reasonable time period for the submission of the assignment. I think uh, what more three week period? So initially, I will allocate three weeks time period final exam. So during that period, you can gather information from the market, from the foreign sources, and then try to do a report and submit on that particular deadline. So normally, it means that assignment consists fifty percent the the final exam. That is for fifty percent. Then Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.